In this video, I'm going to explain to you everything that you need to know to get a scholarship to a Division I university for track and field. The first thing I want you to understand before we get into this video is how scholarships work for track and field. It works differently than football and basketball where every person that gets a scholarship will be on a full ride. Track and field and other smaller sports at universities will actually give out partial scholarships to make their scholarships last for as many people as possible. Track and field being a team of around 60 people for a men's and women's team, they have 12.6 scholarships for men at a fully funded school and 18 scholarships for women. So they need to make these last for 60 people or as close to that as they can. So to wrap up my point, I just wanted you to understand that getting a full ride scholarship for track and field is much more rare than some other sports. That being said, it still does happen all the time and each year as other athletes graduate, schools will have scholarships open up that they can give to new athletes that they deem worthy of those scholarships. And I'm gonna to explain to you the best way to get there to get that full ride scholarship or as close to it as you possibly can. So there's two main factors that will influence a coach's decision to get you that sought after full ride scholarship or as close to it as possible. The first factor is your worth to the team and your second factor is the academics. I'm gonna break those down for you right now. Your worth to a team can literally be put into numbers. A team's looking to get as many points as possible at the conference or NCAA level and this improves their ranking which helps out the program so they're looking to find athletes that can get them the most points possible. I'm gonna pull up a list right now of how the point system works for a track and field meet. You get 10 points for first place, eight points for second place, six points for third place, five points for fourth place, four points for fifth place, and that continues down to eighth place getting one point. So they want athletes that can be in that top eight as much as possible so they can get the most points and get the most out of a meet, which helps our program look good. If you're looking to get a big percentage scholarship directly out of high school, you're going to want to take a look at the conference meet for the university you're looking at. I would say a general rule of thumb is you want to be at least top five in the conference that you're looking at coming directly out of high school for that high percentage scholarship. Now, if you want decent scholarship money, placing in the top eight is going to get you some uh, decent potential for money. I'm gonna pull up a list right now, and this is from Wake Forest, and it's their considerations for full and partial scholarships. Um, I'll put it on here, and I'll put a link in the description for you to check out. A lot of schools have a list like this with their considerations for scholarships. You can go to their website and search around to see if they have it. If not, most schools are gonna have a pretty similar standards for what they're looking for to get a full scholarship. And those are really based on how you would compete coming right out of high school at their conference or NCAA levels in each event. If you check out your desired university's conference results and maybe your performances don't quite stack up how you want them to, don't panic, there's still a few other options you have to get as much money as possible. Your first option is financial aid. I'll put a link in the description below with tips to get as much financial aid as possible. Your other option is academic scholarships, which can be paired with a partial track and field scholarship or you could even earn a full academic scholarship. I'll talk more on the importance of academics in a little bit. Another way you can boost your value to the coaches and help you earn more scholarship money is by doing multiple events. If you're young enough and have a coach that can help you start a new event, I would definitely recommend doing so. The more events you do, the more opportunities you have to score points at a conference meet, therefore increasing your value to the coaches, which can potentially help you get more scholarship money. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about the importance of academics for track and field. Unlike football and basketball, which are sports generating millions of dollars a year for the athletic department, track and field is lucky to break even, and in a lot of cases, they borrow money from the athletic department to fund the program. That being said, track and field doesn't have the wiggle room to get you in without the grades, so getting the grades in high school and working hard in the classroom as well as on the track is super important because you're not going to be able to get into a school if you don't have the grades, and it's as simple as that. So. Work hard, study for your SATs, and get those grades, and those are going to be a big step into getting you that scholarship. The added benefit of getting good grades for a high school is the potential to earn an academic scholarship. If you don't quite have the athletic capabilities to back up a full ride track and field scholarship, to have the academics to back it up and get that partial scholarship for academics or even a full ride for academics can really help you and your family so you're not paying anything to go to school. <laughs> My name is uh, Martin Maric. I'm assistant coach, uh, throws coach at the University of Virginia. Where first thing we're looking at is academics. So if you have a good grades, uh, we go from there. Uh, if the athlete doesn't have adequate grades, then we, uh, unfortunately, there are so many things we can do uh, to get a he, him or she into the school. Uh, so that's the first thing for our university. Um, after that, we look for athletic abilities. It's a really tricky process of recruiting, and there's so many. Um, 
uh, websites now. They're trying to help you, and there's so many ways you can get uh, in touch with uh, coaches. Um, and some coaches uh, in, in very good universities can get uh, really, really uh, uh, swarmed with all the emails, right? So the best uh, way, if I was a high school kid uh, and I really wanted to get into school, I would, uh, like I said, do a little profile on myself, put a couple of videos online, uh, make a little bio. So you want to write an email uh, introducing yourself, uh, putting your grades, uh, your SAT scores, uh, your performances and then sending that to uh, the school that you like and send as many emails uh, as, you, as you want to. Uh, there's a lot of schools out there that are great. Um, there's few academic schools uh, that uh, um, can fit so many, so many athletes, right? So if you don't be discouraged if one coach says no, there's so many schools out there that you can, uh, that you can fit in really well. So yeah, make a little bio, send emails, and um, I would encourage uh, recruits uh, to send emails frequently. So uh, if you have, for instance, there are a couple of, couple of athletes that we have on the team now uh, that I really missed the first couple of emails. We get so many emails, uh, dozens of emails every day. So if the coach doesn't reply right away, keep sending emails, if, you, if that's the school that you really like. So be persistent, uh, be diligent, make a nice uh, portfolio, uh, put it online or uh, if you don't like social media, send it through uh, through emails, and uh, yeah, keep keep uh, knocking on the door because there's so many, uh, like I said, so many athletes sending uh, their uh, information that coaches can be uh, sometimes overwhelmed. So persistency is very important in that regard. Well, we want to find the best fit. That's the most important thing. Whether it's in the University of Virginia, it's a unique individual. Um, they've got to be well-versed academically. They also have to be able to, to help us out on the track, but we also want good, good individuals, good human beings. Um, and our staff does a very, you know, uh, pretty precise job of, of looking into backgrounds. You know, we want to find out more than just, you know, you know, how far they throw or how fast they run, but, but really, you know, what kind of a person they are. You know, we look at what they do on social media. Um, you know, there's a lot of individuals that we X off because of the nonsense that they put out there. Uh, you know, it's one of those things with social media, you're not only representing yourself, but you're gonna be representing our program. And, you know, we just rather not mess with, with somebody that's gonna, you know, do senseless things, to do things that are gonna, they're gonna say things, take pictures. You find out a lot nowadays, really, with social media about who somebody is. It really comes down to performance. And, and about earning it and getting more money. The way that track and field is situated, it's not like football, it's not like basketball. There's just not full scholarships handed out. In track and field, you have 12.6 on the men's side and 18 on the women's side. And with those 12.6 and 18, we're trying to get anywhere between 30 and 40 athletes. So there's very few full scholarships. The only individuals that get a full scholarship really are individuals that um, you know, can contribute at the national level. You know, we kind of, my kind of thought process is, is, is 10 points in a conference meet is worth, you know, a, a full scholarship. And, you know, with, with that, because if you look at how the, the, the analytics behind things takes place is that, you know, you're going to have to score about 110 points at a conference meet on the men's side, maybe about 130 points on the women's side to be able to have a chance to win. And we, Virginia, we've increased. I think it's over 35, 40 scholarships in the last you know, five years of individuals that came in on small scholarships. And as they progressed and they produced and they got better, we added money to them. Um, you know, it's one of those things I would highly recommend everybody know what they're trying to find when they're looking for a scholarship. And what I mean by that is, you know, if, if you think you're worth a full scholarship, you know, know what schools are and know who they have. And if, for example, if you look on a roster and you might be the fifth or sixth best person on the team, you know, it's kind of hard for you to get a scholar, you know, get a big scholarship, you know, in that event area, in that specific event area. <laughs>if you made it this far into the video i've got a little bonus tip for you if you decide on a school and 100 percent that's where you want to go that's the school for you you can say to the coaches that you're considering some of their rival schools so for example virginia you could say that you're considering and looking at virginia tech or florida state and the coaches will you know, start to think about it and if you're a contender for points they don't want you out of those schools competing against us so just a little tip for you if you made it this far in the video and something that could help you out if you're looking and know what school you want to go to.
We're just about at the end of the video, and by now you should know just about everything you need to to get a scholarship to a Division I university for track and field. But I wanted to run a little recap on what we talked about today. The first thing we talked about is that unlike football and basketball, which are sports giving only full ride scholarships, track and field has the ability to give partial scholarships. To earn as much scholarship money as possible, you need to prove your worth to the coaches. Your worth can be determined by the amount of points that you can score at the conference or NCAA level. If you decide on a school that you want to go to, you can check out their conference meet results to see how you stack up and how much point potential you have in that conference. If you check out conference results and think that maybe your performances won't get you that scholarship money, don't panic. There's still a couple other options. You have financial aid and also academic scholarships to help you get as much money as possible. Unlike football and basketball, which are sports generating millions of dollars a year for a school, track and field doesn't have the ability to get you into a school without the academics. So first things first, study hard, get good grades, and that will take you a long way to getting a scholarship to a university that you want to go to. If you're interested in the school and decide that that's where you want to go, send emails containing important information and things that a coach would want to see. Finally, if you start off at a school with a scholarship percentage that wasn't ideal for you, work hard and you can earn more money over time. Thank you very much for watching. If you made it to the end of this video, I hope that you found it informative. If you did, hit that like button below, subscribe for more, share with your friends and family, and until next time, work hard and chase that scholarship. I'll see you guys.